I got a challenge for you guys. Can you play like the ninth world champion Tigran Petrosian? I'm going to show you 12 positions from Tigran Petrosian's games where I would call them critical points. And you have to find the right continuation, the right idea or tactical sequence that Tigran found in his game to win those four games. Let's jump into the first game here. And the first critical point happens right after move 19 in this position after queen d7. What did Tigran Petrosian play here to keep the attack going? Because he has some nice pieces situated here. The king looks a little bit unsafe, but how do you break through? So this is position number one. Pause the video, take a good maybe half minute, try to look at some options and find the right idea here for white to continue pressing. So the move here is h5. This allows white to totally break up black's pawn structure and really gain a lot of control on these light squares, which can come into play later because of this light square bishop. The game continued with bishop g7. And let's actually ask another question here. What would you play? This is position number two. What would you play here with the white pieces? Of course, you can pause the video again, and let's go through the answer. H takes G, not really caring about this attack because this comes with check. And now black took with the king, and now the king is getting closer to the center. It's even more open than it was before. And how can white punish it in position number three? Pause the video again. How can you uh, punish this unsafe king here? What did Petrosian play? The move is f5, giving another check, breaking the connection between the king, or between the queen and bishop. So queen takes bishop is also a threat here, and it really forces black to take in some way. Now queen takes here, I'll quickly look at because this is not what black played in the game, but I quickly want to uh, show you guys the nice idea here. So after queen takes, if you take the queen, well, okay, they'll take your queen and it's still very unclear. A better idea here is to notice that the queen is under attack, so you play queen to b1, because now you're eyeing down the king the second this queen moves, and wherever it moves, you're going to have some nasty discovered check, and it's very beautiful, but be very careful. If you go queen to c2, you allow this move d3 attacking the queen. If you go queen to d3, you allow something like knight to b4, or even maybe more powerful, knight to e5. So be very careful in these positions not to allow black to attack your queen, and you're going to be uh, doing very well. So let's keep going. Instead of queen takes, bishop was, uh, was, was played here. And now what do you play in the fourth critical moment of this game? How did white continue the attack going here? Pause the video. The move is knight d6. Quite a tricky move to find, but it centralizes the knight, puts it on an outpost, a very powerful square for it. And now the bishop is under some heavy pressure. If the bishop moves away, which is what happened in the game, well, suddenly this diagonal is free for white's pieces. And the game ended quite shortly. Um, but there's still one more critical position that I want to look at. Rook f4 here, a very nice idea, trying to slide the rook maybe onto the h file. And after the move f5, what do you play here? The last critical position. And this one is very critical indeed because there's only one move that actually gives white an advantage. And it's a pretty big advantage as well. So pause the video for the last critical moment of this game. How do you give the final blow here? Rook takes g4, crashing through. And after f takes, even the slow queen d2 aims to get the queen involved, maybe cut the king a little bit off. This king is so unsafe that you actually have a lot of time in this position to really attack in any way that you can. And Petrosian did indeed do this, and here black resigned. Let's move on to game number two, where you will have some more positions to try to solve. So in game number two, Petrosian again has the white pieces, and we're going to go to the first critical position, which happened right around move 22, after this move queen to e3, and now knight to b8. This was actually a blunder from black. Black, Black's idea is, of course, to reroute the knight over here, 
where it can put some pressure, but much better was just to move the knight to f6, because moving the knight back to b8 blunders a very nice tactical idea here. What did Petrosian do to punish Black's slow development? Again, pause the video for the sixth critical moment in this video. The move is knight takes d5. And what's the idea? Well, after e takes, another critical moment. How do you uh, punish Black's slow development? And how do you finish off this tactical sequence with knight takes d5? You, of course, play queen takes on uh, e8, noticing that this king is very unsafe, boxed in by its own pawns. And if rook takes, then, of course, there's checkmate with rook takes back. Uh, and so for that reason, his opponent played the move g6, but okay, white has totally crashed through on some material and also now controls the e-file, which is now an open file, so this is totally game over. And Petrosian did end up uh, winning this game because black resigned here in view of all of these powerful pieces for white. Let's keep going. In game number three, we have two more critical moments, the first of which starts right after move 20, f takes. How do you actually, you're playing with the black pieces here, how did Petrosian uh, capitalize on the fact that the king is a little bit unsafe? There maybe is some light squares issue because white is lacking a light square bishop. Black has one. What can black play here to totally crash through? The move, and pause if you need more time, the move is knight takes e4. And after knight takes, the Trojan continued with rook to f1, which is actually not uh, the best move, but the idea is very similar, because after the king moves, the king is still on this diagonal here. So how do you punish it in the ninth critical move? What did the Trojan play here to really capitalize on these light squares? Bishop to f5, basically uh, going to take this knight here, crash through, the rook is already very powerful here, covering the back rank, and I'll just show you how this beautiful game ended. Black got their queen involved as well, now aiming at the knight, aiming at this nice square here. In the game, rook takes c4 was tried as a defense, uh, but after queen to e1, there's so many threats here. The rook also comes in next move, and I mean all of Black's pieces, maybe other than this bishop, is doing something in this position, and of course Petrosian with the black pieces ended up winning very beautifully. Let's keep going. And for the last game here, we have three more critical positions that I think are definitely worth looking at and definitely are nice positions for you to try to solve. And the first one happened right around uh, here in this position um, after rook to e4. Petrosian actually has the white pieces, so let's flip the board after rook to e4 and rook to d8. What is Petrosian doing with his idea here? Why did he uh, give the rook um, some more space along here? What is his plan? Try to find uh, the continuation that Petrosian had in mind and actually executed here. Very beautiful move indeed. What do you play as white? I'll give you a few more seconds, but make sure to pause the video if you need more time. The move is queen takes on f6. And after king takes, of course, the continuation is very critical here if you give away your queen. So how did white continue the attack for the 11th critical moment of this video? Of course, bishop to e5 check, stopping the king from uh, going down the board. And now the king has to come up towards white's territory. And now for the final critical position, you need to find the right continuation, and it's not as easy as it looks. So first, take some time, try to find it, and then we'll go over this final position. Pause the video if you need more time, and let's go through it. So I think most people would immediately start by looking at all these checks, and I mean, that's probably the right way to start looking at this position, but you need to realize that really black can always escape through one of these squares, and then maybe even threaten to escape all the way back. So you have to really cut the king off here, which leads you to the beautiful move bishop to g7. If you found this, congratulations. You're cutting the king off 
from any possibility of escape. And now the checkmate is very simple. Uh, here, Black actually already resigned, realizing what's going to happen. But just to illustrate what the checkmate could be, if Black plays a random move, something like h4, uh, if king f5, then g4 is checkmate. If king h5, then bishop to f3 is checkmate. I mean, you don't need a queen when you have these many pieces around the king. You're going to find some sort of checkmate. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this concept. If you guys did and want maybe more similar videos to these where it's some challenge where I go through a couple games of some incredible grandmaster and we look at critical positions where you need to try to find the move that they played, then let me know down below and I'd be happy to make a part two to this series. So thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new around here and I will see you next time. Peace out.